as the graphic on the screen suggests. Good morning. Uh, let's do this. We're going to animate, make a looping animation out of this uh, composition that we have created earlier. Um, while I'm here, I'm actually going to save this as a different project. Uh, let's see, screencast. Let's save. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's just begin by basically making a really simple animation where this little swatch that we've added um, in the upper right hand corner to use as like a color reference, um, we're going to animate the position of this. So let's look down in our layers panel here. We have my screenshot here at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to rename this and I would like you to as well. So to rename you click once on it, you'll see a highlight, hit the return key on the keyboard. And then you see it becomes editable. I'm just going to call this colors. And we have a shape layer. I know what that is. It's a rectangle. And I have my good morning layer. Um, here is the timeline on the right. Uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we are working with a three second animation, which I currently am. Um, in order to double check, let's go back into the composition settings. Composition menu. Composition settings. And down here under duration, no matter what this says, unless you see 0300 here at the end, um, that's what you want. Uh, but to really easily input that time code, just type in 300, 300. That means three seconds and zero frames. Um, and then I'll click OK. All right, um, so locate your colors layer here in the layers panel. And then we are going to use a new keyboard shortcut, which is the Option key and P as in Paul. So Option P. That creates a keyframe for the position, which is currently uh, the position of this graphic here, which is currently at this X and Y coordinate. Um, so we're going to continue and do that three more times. So we're going to make four keyframes at the zero, kind of the very beginning. Or here where you say, uh, see one second, zero frames, two seconds, and at the very end. So let's come over here, bring my little playhead. This is referred to as a playhead. It looks like a guitar pick with like a little string dangling from it. Um, option, P. Okay, a little blue diamond pops up. We're going to the two second marker, option, P. And then the very end. Um, you cannot go to the very end. It will stop you one frame short. That's okay. Option P. Um, this is considered the end. So yeah, I got those four keyframes. Now we're going to kind of tell this graphic where to be at each uh, keyframe, at each moment in time here, I guess I should say. So let's go back to the very beginning. So my playhead is aligned with the first keyframe. So at this point in time, right now it thinks it should be at this coordinate. And I'm going to skip to the next keyframe. I click it on this little arrow here. Go to next keyframe. Uh, this keyframe thinks that this graphic should be at this coordinate, and so on and so on. Um, but I'm going to bring my play to the very beginning. At this point in time, we want to tell this graphic to start the animation at the very left side of the screen, literally off the composition. So remember, align your playhead here at the beginning, and then drag it. If you don't see a little line with uh, dots on it might not be doing it right. I'm gonna hold down the shift key as well. Watch what happens when I hold down shift It will snap directly to the left And then let go of the mouse So at this moment in time That graphic is going to begin here and as I scrub across the playlist you'll see each frame That's kind of represented by one of these circles um, Yeah, so we have told it where to begin and where to stop and After Effects fills in the in-betweens for us. Um, so that's kind of cool. I'm going to hit the space bar to play the animation. So that's it. It just comes in, stops, and repeats. So this is not looping right now. We want to make this loop. By loop, um, well, I'll show you what I mean by loop. So if I scrub across my timeline, here it stops. We actually want it to stay stopped until the two second marker. And then it's gonna start moving again and it's going to shoot off the screen at three seconds. So while we're here, 
So I haven't changed anything at the two or the one second keyframes. Now let's go to the end. And while we're aligned with the last keyframe, click and drag. I'm gonna hold down shift, let go of the mouse. And now we have an animation where the graphic comes in from the left and scoots off to the right. Okay, awesome. Let's keep going, shall we? Um, I'm going to hit the space bar to stop the animation. The next thing I want to do is add some eases. Notice when I play this, it kind of like goes, hits a wall, and then goes again. Goes, hits a wall, and goes again. Um, it's kind of not very natural. So what we're going to do is add eases on these two middle keyframes. So by easing, I'll show you what I mean. Right click on the keyframe, choose keyframe assistant, easy ease in. So when it comes to a stop, it's going to slow down a little bit. And then on this keyframe, we are going to choose keyframe assistant, easy ease out. So now when I play the animation, it kind of skids to a stop and kind of starts up in a more natural manner. Um, that's it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, let's continue. We're going to now animate the shape here, the rectangle. So to do that, um, we're going to make a scale animation. So we're gonna close my colors layer here. I'm gonna click on a little twirly, go to my shape layer. And um, before we make the scale animation, you wanna make sure that this little anchor point is in the center of both your text, which it's not, and your shape layer, which it kind of is. Um, so to quickly reset the anchor point, uh, let's start with the text, because clearly it's not centered. I'm gonna hold down the Command key, so that's next to the spacebar, Command, and then double click on this tool here. It's called a Pan Behind or Anchor Point tool. Okay, double click, Command, double click. Centered. Click on Shape Layer 1, just to be sure. Command, double click, it kind of moves, so that's good. Uh, I'll explain why we did that later. While we're on the shape layer, let's add four scale keyframes. So you can imagine if position was option P, scale is option S. So at the same points in time, um, actually if we select our colors layer, I told you to close this, hit the U key on your keyboard and it will show you uh, whatever you've animated. So at these four points in time, I'm gonna make scale keyframes on the shape layer. So shape layer, here I am at the first keyframe, option S for scale. You see it's set at 100%. We're gonna change this in a minute. One second, option S. You see that creates a keyframe. Two seconds, option S. Three seconds, option S. Okay, awesome. Um, so now that we've told the keyframes where to go, now we need to like set the parameters for those keyframes. And I'm only gonna change, again, the first and the last keyframe. So we'll go to the very beginning of the animation and turn down the scale to zero. So I'm gonna click once on this number, 100. Just click once, zero, and then hit enter. It should disappear, and that's good because it will scale from one, from zero to 100 here. It's gonna hang out for a second and then now I'll go again to my last keyframe and turn this down to zero. I'll hit play. So this rectangle is kind of using the same timing as this rectangle, uh, which is kind of useful. So that's why I was looking at these keyframes. Um, now the text isn't animating. So what we want to do for that is we're going to take uh, our playhead and go between the second and third keyframes. So anywhere between one and two seconds you've been following along. Basically where um, the point in time with which we see like our original graphic, right? Like we originally designed this graphic um, and we've kind of animated our way into that position. Um, so we need to be where everything lands and stays still, if that makes sense. So while we're here, anywhere between these two spots, these two keyframes, I'm going to tell the good morning layer to have a parent. So look at this parent menu where it says none. So good morning, we're gonna tell it to use the shape layer for its animation information. Hit play, now everything is animating. Um, so 
all I had to do was create the animation for the shape layer, and it did the same thing for the uh, text layer as well. The reason why we changed the anchor points is because if I did not, um, it would do something like this. So it's now going to shrink kind of, uh, well, it didn't do it, of course. Um, but I promise that's why. Oh, I think probably the, sh probably the text layer uses the same anchor point. So um, maybe I didn't need to change the anchor point for text. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, once you are at this point and you've got a looping GIF, uh, so oops, let me fix that. So your first frame should be an empty screen and your last frame should be an empty screen. That's how you get a looping effect. Um, that's it. So now we're going to save this. File, save, and then we need to render it. Very easy, file, export, and then add to render queue. We add it to the render queue, it's gonna open up this window down here. Um, and the only thing we need to do here is under output, where it says not yet specified, we're gonna like click on this link and give it a name, shape animation, and tell it where to go. I'm gonna put it on my desktop, click save, and uh, then click on this render button. And we should hear, when you render it, that nice little noise. And if you hear a goat sound, that means something went wrong. So that might happen. Um, hope you liked the video. And um, let me know when you're done.